Okay, boys, it's me, Seagal, and I'll be babysitting you again today. Oh, please don't babysit. Not Seagal. Oh, no, it's Seagal again. Ah! Don't worry, boys, I'm a fantastic babysitter. Okay, in this video we're going to talk about hemolytic uremic syndrome, okay? So there's no actually person in the scene representing hemolytic uremic syndrome. What we have over here is these two kids over here. And one is a red blood cell for heme, that's the hemolytic part. And here we have a urea container, well a urine container. A urine container is a bucket for urine, because this is going to represent uremic. Because in hemolytic uremic syndrome, well let's look at the name itself. Hemolytic refers to the destruction of red blood cells, that's why this red blood cell here is well, you know, for the purpose of this, we'll make him being destroyed. And uremic. This refers to the u uremia as a result of the improperly functioning kidney. Okay? And both of the, these result, both the hemolytic part and the uremic part, result from clots that form in the blood vessels, primarily in the kidneys. Okay, so let's talk, let, take a look at the babysitter over here. She has she-gal on her shirt. I don't know what a she-gal is, but she's going to represent shigella, shigella-like toxin, because E. coli can cause hemolytic uremic syndrome, specifically the shigella-like toxin form of the EHEC, the serotype 0157H7. That's why she also has on her shirt, I don't know what that is, the 015H7. So that infection can lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome. And we note, I'm sorry about this, but I have to put this here, that we have bloody diarrhea under her. Maybe she went during bloody diarrhea as she walked in, I don't know, but this helps us remember that the E. coli can cause bloody diarrhea. Now other strains of E. coli besides O157H7 can cause hemolytic uremic syndrome, but O157H7 is the common common cause. And, and this typically occurs in children, that's why she's babysitting children. Just as a side point, the atypical form of hemolytic uremic syndrome is caused by complement gene mutations or autoimmune response. Okay? If you take a look, on top of the she gal, three things going on. We see this small angel up here. There's this small angel up here, or a micro angel, we'll call her a micro angel, and she's gonna represent microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So basically as thrombi in the vessels shear past the blood cells as they pass, it gives them a helmet look. Okay, so that's what microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And as we'll see by the way, you'll note that there's a helmet on the floor in the room. It helps remember the helmet look of the red blood cells. Next we look, the, um, the angel is inside this thrombone, this thrombone, to help us remember, and it's on its side, the thrombone is on its side, to help us remember, thrombocytopenia due to activation and aggregation of platelets. Next, we find this kidney that's being destroyed by the thrombone, the kidney is being destroyed. This helps us remember the acute kidney injury associated with hemolytic uremic syndrome. This is due to thrombic deposition in the glomeruli of the nephrons in the kidney. Alrighty then. So as we note, the boys stuck their blocks in the wall, the LDH blocks. This is to help us remember the increased levels of LDH in the blood due to hemolytic uremic syndrome, LDH for lactate dehydrogenase. On top of the scene over here, we see plasmas seriously ridiculous. I don't know who put this here, I don't know if the kids did it, I don't know if the babysitter did it, I don't know. But I know that plasmas seriously ridiculous is going to help us remember the treatment for hemolytic uremic syndrome involves plasmas, plasmapheresis, seriously for steroids, and ridiculous for rediximab. That is interesting. Under the room over here is kind of random. There's a plate here. This helps us remember that there's going to be a decrease in the number of platelets in hemolytic uremic syndrome. All right, just a final word, maybe is a high yield factor that coagulation pathway is not activated in hemolytic uric syndrome and in thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, and this distinguishes it from DIC, in which the coagulation path in which the coagulation pathway is activated. Okay, that is our scene. I hope you enjoyed. It means a lot to me when you subscribe, so please do so. Alrighty, take care.